Okay, so we'll get started from where we left in the previous uh, uh, module. We'll, uh, we were talking about uh, the collection. We kind of left just before the collection. We said how the waste has to be has to be stored uh, in the places where it is uh, being uh, uh, generated. So today we'll. Uh, so once the waste is generated, we need to collect it. So today we'll talk about what are the different collection equipment that is typically used, uh, and uh, we'll also. Uh, see the examples some some photographs of uh, different collection equipment in action and uh, that will give you some ideas about uh, what what type of collection equipment again it depends on what type of waste we are producing what type of uh, uh, like a city we have uh, sometimes you may have to go for a uh, place where uh, narrow streets so you cannot have a big truck going around so there are different uh, ways it can it can be done and you will see some examples uh, on uh, in this particular module and when we look at some of the, we'll, as I said, there will be three specific case studies, at least three, uh, for the first, among the first 20 smart cities that have been identified in, in India. So you will see some of the other examples there as well. So let's get started. So in terms of the collection equipment, there are in broadly, so broadly we have two types. One is the hauled container and one is the stationary container. As the name suggests, it's based on uh, like a haul container or or, or uh, the stationary container for the haul container system, it's uh, it's it's the haul means the it's a you have the uh, trash can you have a, a big 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 trash can as you saw in the previous uh, module and then you have a, a truck coming in and it is taking the whole trash can with it so it's that's the haul container so it is hauling it away. So it's uh, not it's not a stationary; it is hauling it away. And the other part, when we say stationary, uh, stationary is when the trash can stays where it is. A truck comes in, unloads the material from this trash can into the truck itself, and the truck moves away. So empty truck comes in, takes unloads the material from the trash can, truck, uh, the truck uh, gets filled, and then the truck goes away with that uh, garbage. Uh, so there is a halt means when the trash can itself gets taken away and then the new new trash can new empty trash can is put there so when we use it depending on uh, as you can see over here depending on uh, the different types of location different types of waste either you will use for a haul container or the stationary container so for the haul container system tip, we will typically use it in a commercial setting or a cnd debris commercial where you have a lot of waste being produced say in a big uh, institutional area big mall area where you have a huge trash can so all the garbage is getting filled in there so this trash can becomes so heavy that now the truck you cannot really unload it either mechanically or uh, or using uh, physical means so what either you have to kind of go in and try to dig it out and put it in the truck so that requires a lot of uh, manpower so rather than doing that we take this whole container with it and put an empty container there same thing with construction and demolition debris when we say construction and demolition waste which we'll talk more in detail towards the end of this course cnd waste is uh, construction waste is what we have we have concrete we have brick we could have wood pieces uh, so those are heavy stuff. So they are uh, really heavy stuff. So we cannot really unload them from one one container to another container. So we we basically take the whole container away, and that's why it is says hauling. It's when the container itself is hauled away. So you should not worry, you should not have difficulty remembering these two because uh, haul means. Uh, where uh, things have been the trash can itself is taken away is stationary means where the trash can is stays as it is when I'm talking about trash can I'm talking about the huge trash can not the small ones that we use it at home so for the stationary container system usually in the residential and commercial area uh, some commercial area will also will have uh, for the residential areas as you will you will see lots of pictures here as a residential area you have the small trash can on the side of the road this uh, truck will come in and it will unload it and then the trash can stays right, right there and uh, your uh, waste is taken away. So those are the two different types of uh, uh, collection equipment potentially used and these will be typically our primary collection center or the secondary collection center as we call it in Indian context. If you look at any DPR of any ULB in India, you will see a primary collection and a secondary collection. Primary collection is the collection from the each and every households and which is done uh, predominantly I would say like almost every day 
most of these uh, big uh, cities now which have, which has lot of uh, high rise apartment complexes they basically have they have hired somebody a private party who comes and collect the garbage from each and every house and then that garbage is taken away to a outside of that uh, so some places actually I have seen in Coimbatore or in uh, Bangalore where they, they just on the outskirts of that gated community they will have a place where this uh, waste will be uh, will be dumped and then the municipality truck will collect it from that particular location and then it will take it to either to a transfer station or to a landfill or to maybe a secondary processing facility. So, there are different ways things gets managed. So, uh, in the residential collection system, when we have the residential collection system, you need to have a storage container specification. Again, these things are part of the municipal solid waste management rules as well. So, like what kind of a storage container it can be and that depends on what kind of truck will come to collect it, whether you want it mechanized, whether you want it semi mechanized, whether you want it totally manual. So, based on that you will have different types of containers and uh, you will see again you will see lots of pictures of that and uh, whether there is a separation requirement or whether you are doing source separated or you are collecting everything together and taking it to a uh, like a material recycling facility where you will do that to like uh, when I, the ULB will have a separate uh, waste shorting happening over there and frequency of collection. So, frequency of collection is also uh, more uh, say if it is a once a week we need a bigger container, if it is uh, once in every two days or once every day it is like a daily collection you need different types of containers. And then where it will be picked up whether a curb site uh, when we say curb site basically it is on the just in front of the house in typically we are talking about the individual houses. So, there the curb site is on the just uh, in front of the house there could be backyard collection which uh, many places uh, especially initially when they started collecting the garbage from each houses. Some people do not like to keep the garbage on up front. So, they want the garbage on the back of the house. So, things have been collected from the back as well and if you are living in a uh, semi urban area or in rural areas since the houses are so much apart it is many times it is difficult to have a collection truck going around and collecting the garbage. So, what we what the arrangement made there is there will be a drop off location. So, it will be the rest waste generators responsibility like somebody like our like a, as a citizens responsibility they will be allocated a designated drop off center. So, I live people living in area A will go to a location Y where there is a drop off center all the different uh, like a source separation or whatever the ULB has planned for whether they want it wet and dry whether they want even wet and even within dry they want paper separate, plastic separate, glass separate that depends on what the, the municipal council has come up with, what the councillor has, what the ward commissioners has come up with and that is usually happens in consultation with the normal people uh, with the, like the people public in, in general and then you go and drop off your waste there and there will be a person who will be overseeing the whole operation and typically in uh, where this kind of location you will go to they will look at your travel license. Uh, um, or some sort of ID which uh, tells you that you are from that area because uh, you cannot come from some other area and drop off your waste in this. If you do that they will charge you more. If you are from that local area you already kind of pay for that as part of the property tax or you could there could be some basic charges. So, you need to show your ID uh, when you come and drop off uh, at, at these drop off centers. Then a stationary container system uh, when we have we are talking about the stationary container it could be manually loaded uh, it could when, when we talk about manually load uh, it could be side loader or rear loader. If you just uh, these are the different ones if you do not uh, if you are not able to kind of uh, understand this the differentiation between these two do not worry too much in few minutes from now you will see lots of pictures with explaining each and every one again I will show you the picture and explain that. But uh, it could be manually or mechanically. So, there could be either uh, a manual system or a mechanical system. If it is a manual system it could be side loaded or rear loaded. Side loaded means uh, in, in the truck you have uh, the garbage being loaded from the side or it could be that on the back of the truck the garbage is loaded from the back of the uh, truck. Same thing with the mechanically loaded. Mechanically loaded means you will have a hydraulic arm where things will get uh, lifted up. It could be front loader, 
especially for the big trash can, things will go in there and hold the trash can and lift it and dump it on the back of the truck and then put the trash can back there. That's your, uh, those kind of arrangements are also there in terms of the front loader. It could be a side loader and it could be a grapple loader. Grapple loader also your picture of that too. Grapple loader is essentially what you do is uh, you have your truck right here. Uh, this is your kind of an arm, it goes there, collects the garbage, picks it up and bring it and drop it over there. So that's called a grapple loader. So those kind of uh, things are also uh, used. So let's see some picture now. So this is a rear loader truck. It's a rear loader manual pickup as you can see. So this uh, people have uh, say re residences uh, just outskirts of their house on the side of the road. They have uh, put their garbage can in the usually people will do that in the in the morning time when you when they go for work they will take this uh, every uh, in most of the western world the, the, as i said earlier it's a, it's a once in a week collection so you will know say your area will be collected on a wednesday or a friday or a saturday so you know which days usually sunday there is no collection it's a holiday for all so you will have this uh, uh, collection happening on a particular uh, day of the week so in the morning by 7, 7.30 you are supposed to bring your garbage can and put it on the outs just next to the road and when this truck will come in, this is a manual rear loader manual pickup. So as you can see this gentleman, uh, this, uh, he is uh, taking this uh, garbage can, he emptied it. Now he will go there and pick up the another one and then empty it. So he will basically bring it here and uh, it will get emptied uh, in, into this truck. And the other thing that you see in this truck is this part where you see this particular part, it actually is a compactor. So when the garbage, as you can see over here, the garbage will actually move into the truck from here and this it will get compacted. So it uh, does get, uh, so these trucks are, it is getting compacted into the truck. So what is the benefit of having this compaction there? Because they, that means that more and more houses can be served uh, with one truck. So you are you are not doing a super compaction, but you are doing a little bit of compaction because many, many times you have a very fluffy kind of material. You have a cardboard, you may have some uh, thermocol and all those material which takes a lot of volume, but their weight is very less. So this compactor helps in uh, compacting those garbage into the truck and that uh, that way you can service more houses in one run. These trucks are highly sophisticated trucks. Some of these uh, one like uh, a good truck these days, uh, usually they will, uh, this is a manual one. So here he can, if here he can even uh, have a look at the garbage what's in there. If there is something, something wrong, he will not pick it up and he will put a sticker uh, on here saying that uh, this was uh, because of this region, your garbage was not picked up. So. But in the automated ones, as you will see some of the automated ones, usually they will have a, that's a driver who is sitting here has a camera and usually it's a one person vehicle. So they has a camera, once the garbage is loaded, uh, he can even see in the camera what, what's going, going into the truck. And if he sees there is some problem, uh, it's like a re recyclables are coming in regular trash, he will know based on the GPS location, he, will, he knows the address of the house, so he will make a, make a note of that. He will let the office people know and there is a, like a violation uh, that uh, waste was not separated properly. The people will get a SMS or it will get one email coming to them like an automated email so that your waste was not sorted properly today and look at the sticker that was left on your door and, uh, and they have to fix it. If they don't fix it, if they see that problem happening frequently, even the house may be told that will not service your house anymore. So those are the things are there. And some of those uh, even it started uh, in, uh, in India. Recently we visited Bobili and we will show you some, we believe this is in Andhra Pradesh. And uh, we have, there is some, uh, if you don't do source separation properly, there is a fine and they are trying to enforce that fine. Sometimes it's difficult to do that, uh, but things are picking up there where uh, there are some, some of the uh, towns, they are actually forcing people that you need to separate. And that's as a, as a responsible citizen, we need to follow the rules too. Municipal Solid Waste Management Rules 2016, it is not for the ULBs or the people working in ULB or the, the industries who are in uh, waste management sector. They, are, it, they have to follow the rule, but we as a common citizen, we also have the responsibility of follow the rule. If it requires as a waste generator, our requirement is we need to keep it source separated. So if we don't do it, uh, the ULB has every right to, to do a fine within the rule and uh, that's some, in some ULBs they have started doing that. So 
and it is happening uh, other places in the world too. It is nothing, uh, we, we cannot complain in India because this is pretty much common. It's an international practice these days that, of course, we have to follow the rule. If you don't follow traffic rule, you get the traffic ticket. So if you don't follow West rule, you will get a West ticket. So it's kind of a uh, uh, similar concept here. So this is one uh, type of truck. Then you see this is, uh, this is a semi-automated. And this, is, uh, this picture is actually near, uh, it's uh, uh, San Francisco. And this, uh, this is a truck here. San Francisco, they have a, uh, they do a three-way collection actually. This is the green one. So this is a green, green uh, bin. So green bin has only the food waste and the organics in here. Then they have a black bin, which is for the real landfill. And then they have a blue bin, which is for uh, the recyclables. So in the, here, as you can see, it's a semi-automated and it's a rear loader. So rear means from the back. So that's why it's, it's, a, it's a loading is done from the back side. So that's why it is called rear loader. Uh, let's go, sorry. So it's a uh, loading is done from the back. So that's why you see, uh, so that's in the back of uh, the truck. So this gentleman who is, uh, there will be at least one driver there and this gentleman he will bring, uh, he will, so these trash cans probably will be on the side of the road and then he will bring it to over here. So this trash cans will get, bring it over here. Then he just uh, uh, puts it uh, kind of, he puts it along the rear of the truck and there is a arm coming from the truck which lifts this uh, uh, container and then it unloads it over here. So what is the benefit of having this uh, semi-automated? Because what it does, it's, it, uh, it is actually a big help for this gentleman right here because uh, trying to lift this uh, garbage can with filled with entirely filled with the food waste, you can think about so much of a weight. Food waste has a lot of moisture. It's, it gets really heavy. So think about the back of this gentleman over here. He will have a big problem in the back if uh, in his, uh, so if he doesn't, uh, if we don't have a semi-automated, uh, like it's, we have to look at the, uh, the worker's health and safety as well. So, so here this, uh, uh, this uh, gets semi-automated. So it gets unloaded into the truck and that's how it uh, goes into, uh, into the truck and then again you have a compactor here and that compactor will compact the garbage so that you can service more houses. This one in a commercial area as you can see over here this is not a very uh, like a, it's, the picture is not very uh, like a great ones but uh, I think uh, you can see this is a again this, this one is a waste management truck waste management you might be knowing that's a almost uh, that's a fortune 500 company and uh, they are using uh, uh, they use uh, this uh, they, like uh, they, they have been very active in the waste management sector so here this uh, waste management uh, this truck is there and then there is an arm up front as you can uh, this there is actually a trash can right there behind this sign which doesn't show up very well but here you can see the trash can being lifted so this truck has an arm up front so trash can was was over here it was lifted all the way to the top and you are seeing in the, this uh, trash can that you see on top. That is the trash can which is lifted up. So it's, uh, it's in terms of where it, it took an took a arm and lifted it and it's putting it back into the, in, 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 into the truck. So the garbage is coming into the truck over here. So that's how it, it is done. Usually they will have some cameras there where the driver can also see if there is some, some problematic uh, substances, he will find out. And uh, there is a compactor there again. So here, and then he will put this, this trash can will go back to its location over there. So this is a, a stationary container system. So it's, uh, it's not a haul. So all the pictures that we have seen is the stationary container system. The waste container is, stays in place. Waste is unloaded into the truck and the truck is carrying the waste away. So there are a lot of uh, uh, automated stationary container pickup is there. There are uh, different types of pickup. So here you can see uh, this is the arm uh, here like a nice picture of this. So here you have this arm coming out. This arm or similar arm is there on the opposite side and this is the trash can which has been lifted up and then it will be taken over here. You can see the hole on top and then it will get dumped into the, gar into the waste over there. So this is how uh, this one, uh, this thing is done. This one is the grapple loader. As you can see, this is the arm uh, where uh, you can see the trash can over here as well. So this trash can was somewhere over here. So this arm actually came in, lifted this trash can up and, uh, and then it is uh, emptying it into this truck. So there are different types of truck. 
and uh, this is an, another way of uh, automated truck where things have been loaded up here. The truck body is also uh, tilted a little bit. So that's th there are a variety of trucks out there depending on what kind of uh, uh, based on what will work in your city, in uh, your area, you choose ones which works best for you. And these trucks, more and more automated trucks we have, the, now we are getting some, some of these uh, garbage trucks like the self compactor one, we are get, we, I, I see started seeing it uh, in India. Uh, in Khalakpur municipality actually recently bought one just few few weeks back I was uh, I saw that in the Khalakpur town so I'm pretty sure it will be must be coming into others other uh, towns and uh, other ULBs as well so and these trucks are expensive so that's it's uh, that's uh, the good ones uh, as I was telling you uh, yesterday uh, sorry in the previous module that uh, if you uh, look at the that particular I think I mentioned to you about that video where uh, secret life of garbage they talk about these trucks as well and that uh, truck uh, some, of, some of these trucks is up to $250,000 so $250,000 it's almost like 1 crore isn't it certainly yeah, even more than that right now it's around 60 say 65 rupees so even if for our uh, for our uh, calculation sake let's say 60 rupees so it's what 1.2 and then another like 1.5 crore so around 1.5 crore for one truck. So it's not cheap. So that's why this uh, waste routing, which we will talk about, becomes very important. Where uh, if we can reduce the number of trucks, uh, then it's always. And the more the compartment you want for the source segregation, source segregation waste, the cost will go add up. So that's why waste business. It's uh, the collection and transportation of the garbage is the is the costliest. Uh, component of the waste management. So it's uh, that's typically one question asked in many, um, like uh, I've seen in many of the like MTech exam or PhD exam, people will ask them, what is the costliest component of the waste management system? And it is the collection, collecting the garbage. So collecting and transporting the garbage, it's very very expensive part. So if you can somehow like make it a, make make it optimized. So there is an optimization solution. There is an operation research involved here. So garbage business is not a very simple business. It's a, it's a very highly multidisciplinary area, and I'll talk about that optimization thing as, as we make progress uh, in in this particular uh, uh, like topic. So here there are some other examples. The tilt firm will look for hauled containers. Here now the container itself has been brought in. So this is this was the container. Typically, you see in a CND landfill, the container was uh, loaded up at uh, the construction site, and then when it came to and then hauled to the landfill or the dumps, uh, like the landfill site. And uh, here at the landfill site, what they have done, they with the hydraulic, uh, like a jack, uh, like a hydraulic arm, things the whole frame it gets loaded, it gets uh, tilted, and then the waste will come out. Uh, based on gravity, it will just slide out. So that's uh, it will the waste will basically slide out because of the slope there. So that's uh, that uh, that is also uh, used for the haul container. So now we are moving from a stationary container to the haul container system. This is a tractor trailer. Here again, uh, uh, you uh, you lift things up using this tractor and put it in here. So here, as you can see, uh, this is, has been lifted from there, and then it will basically. It will be taken and put it in uh, into this truck, and then it will be taken away uh, for uh, for like a treatment or disposal. So this is another uh, dump truck which is uh, used. So if you can, this is a dump truck carrying all the waste, and uh, which goes to the typical in a CND landfill. You see that so it is bringing all the waste, which then you have to take this. You have to you have to empty this uh, 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 waste uh, from there. So this, this will be basically emptied from this side and it will come out and get uh, dumped on, onto, onto the landfill side. So uh, in terms of uh, waste collection, uh, it can be picked up at source. We talked about that uh, from, from the houses. You saw some pictures. Can be from place of business. That's also you saw a picture of that from the haul container uh, uh, from uh, the stationary container system. It could be at CND site that also you saw an example of that. So this is it could be picked up at the source. The other option is you can deliver it by the generator. You can take it to the drop off center that we talked about or you can have a collection event. So we will try to see some example of that. So this is a typical example of a citizen drop off. You will see this happening mostly in a uh, rural area or a semi urban area where the houses are far apart. So, houses are little, they are not uh, close to each other. So, you have one house, then you travel several, uh, several maybe uh, uh, meters, then you have another house, then you have another house. So, 
in say if you have a truck going around the truck will actually be tra traveling a lot without service and will not be able to serve a lot of houses so those areas uh, especially in the farm areas or the rural areas what uh, what has been done there is a citizen drop off so they make a centralized citizen drop off location where uh, you as a citizen can can uh, drive in or you can uh, usually uh, uh, you can drive in with your garbage in your truck or in your uh, car and then you can drop off so here one example that you can see over here that here uh, citizen has come in and he is uh, probably their fence got broken so he is just uh, discharging getting rid of this fence in uh, one, this, con this container which is for the organics uh, kind of material here the cardboards have been put there for the recyclable so you can have labels of different types of material and uh, it will be it will be dumped in uh, different containers so and then you can have a special event a special event usually for say for uh, electronic waste or even these days for pharmaceuticals and personal care products pharmaceutical waste uh, we are uh, the people are eating lots of medicine these days and uh, these medicines uh, earlier what we used to do uh, that uh, the regulation used to tell that you flush that medicine down the toilet so if you have an unused medication say if you go to the doctor uh, you go to the doctor doctor gives you a lot of med uh, lots of medicine the, and then you consume only part of it and so that uh, that medicine has to be uh, is still lying in your house it's expired medicine now you cannot use it anymore so it has to be uh, disposed so earlier the thought was you put it in uh, put it in the toilet and flush it down uh, but since it goes to the wastewater treatment plant wastewater treatment plant is not designed to treat for it so these pharmaceuticals are showing up either in the biosolids or the affluent then from the affluent to the surface water so nowadays the concept of change that we should want we should probably put it in a uh, landfill environment so uh, so it's uh, so but the, so there is will be a special collection event from time to time there will be a special collection event where this uh, pharmaceutical waste will be taken away so on the, there is similarly there used to be a special collection event for e waste so this best buy as uh, if some of you maybe may have heard the name it's one of the chain stores of uh, uh, for electronics in uh, north america also in australia new zealand and other places so there they have uh, they facilitated so this is the parking lot in front of them they facilitated this uh, uh, waste collection where people were come people came in with their old electronics and they they were the, this uh, cardboard boxes were lined up here big big cardboard boxes and they will basically put it in these cardboard boxes so that's how and then it will be taken to a e waste uh, uh, like a recycler or e waste uh, treatment center so you see some some other pictures of the same thing e waste being taken away the other aspect is uh, the street sweeping so if you when you do the street sweeping that waste has to go somewhere so that waste also gets collected that became a, a part of municipal solid waste then when you try to do the waste unloading you can use the you can use uh, gravity which is uh, using the roll up boxes or the dumper trucks and uh, you can also do a mechanical removal which is a compactor trucks or transfer trailer so let's look at some examples of that and then uh, so this is a unloading of a roll up box using tilt frame so this one is this is a roll up box it has a tilt frame as you can if you can watch the pictures uh, watch the picture carefully so this is a truck came into the disposal site then got got open on the back and then it's lifted up and then as you can see it uh, dumped all the garbage uh, whatever it was there on onto the disposal site so this is uh, this this is how it is used in terms of uh, unloading of of a roll up box uh, from there similarly here unloading of a compactor truck you remember these trucks which we looked at it earlier where the waste uh, color got collected and it was compacted now we have to take this waste out so how it is done plate which moves along the truck so uh, that uh, it moves along the truck and then takes this garbage out from the truck so that's how it uh, it it works on these uh, compactor trucks so we'll we'll continue this discussion in our next module and uh, we'll also use some more pictures of uh, this collection as i said uh, its uh, pictures helps you understand it better that's how i think uh, that uh, showing this these pictures you will really help in terms of understanding of how things uh, is working and from a from a smart city perspective uh, at some point of time we need to get these fancy equipments to our ulbs as well because uh, we, we if we want to manage it properly we want to do the source separation if we want to do the collection properly this this is the typical global practice today so those things needs to be uh, brought in into the indian contest and so that we can uh, we can improve our waste management system 
So with that, let us uh, uh, close this particular video and then uh, we will continue our discussion in the next video. Thank you.